Hey, this is Brimstone. You're watching AFK away from the keyboard. Ain't no better place to be than right here watching now. <laughs> We never got to play the Frisbee game. I could beat him in that game, I think. You lost, dude. I think. Jeff beat your ass at Highlight, so I mean. That's right. Actually, David Warner killed me. Well, Jeff didn't David kill me. Jeff. Yeah. But I know. You could have gone on a few more rounds, right? You were pretty good at that for a accounting program, right? <laughs> I didn't say that. Anyway, hello. I have to tell you, I have a, I picked up a little bit of a flu bug before I left oh, uh, North Carolina. And so this is me on drugs. This isn't me. Oh, look at <laughs> This is it's, your brain it's on It's DayQuil. Drugs. It's not that great. You know what I mean? It's not I was on it yesterday, so I know. It's a fun trip. Um, <sighs> who are these people in front? I know. How about always that group in, the front in front here. We know those girls. I know. I call them, I know you don't, but, but I call I them, do know them famine, pestilence, and death. <laughs> Very good. You're good on DayQuil. That's good. <laughs> do I have the flu now? Oh. You might. Uh, I might. I might. No, I was sick when I got here, too. Everybody's sick. I'm coming on the airplane here, and uh, the, uh, the uh, attendant uh, hacks right in my face. I mean, I'm, you know. Do you like water or coffee? <laughs> oh, I mean, everybody on the thing. I was surrounded by sneezing, wheezing. It's a wonderful life. Anyway, happy to be here. Happy to talk about. What do you want to talk about? I want to. I want to say that the panel is is called the Tron panel, and and he's really Tron, you know. So it's really it's really in capital letters T R O N panel, and then down here it says C R O M, the little character I play. I don't know Com. that much about Tron, but I like that. But the Tron Crom, Tron Crom, that's a great name. That's us. I think it's Tron Crom. It's Tron Crom. You know, we know each other. We go back back that far. Um, uh, I know Peter and I have talked about it, but we came out to uh, uh, Hollywood around the same year, around seven, 1973, around there. And we're Both the were hitting around. I didn't. I had failed to to realize that he was on also on Scarecrow and Mrs. King. That's right. Remember, we started to go. Correct, we, we didn't work on together on that, and we didn't work together on Tron. Really, we I didn't. Know. We didn't I say know. I saw to you each in other. passing. Yeah. And by the way, uh, in the tights back in the day. Oh, I could wear those tights, couldn't <laughs> I? <laughs> we I, both could work those tights. I'll tell you. That was something else. I always say those tights are made for, you know, uh, Eastern European gymnastic stars, girls, you know. That's Nadia true. Coleman each can wear them. And Bruce got away with it pretty good, but it's really not my look. You know, I saw them recently. They're on a traveling exhibition of Disney archives, it's called. Uh, it was at the Reagan Library in L.A., outside of L.A., when I saw it. And um, mine, apparently, the, the only remaining costume I had, we had about, we had a few of them because you had to change them out um, if you got too sweaty. And, um, and I saw it, and it's like they shrunk down. I said, I'm looking at it going, how did I ever fit in that thing? I know they're like, they weren't really spandex. It was something like that, though, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I, again, it's pretty clingy. Yeah, but they, they told me they had found my wardrobe in a corner on the floor. It had been there for 30 years. And it was kind of <laughs> yellowed and dirty, so they did what they could to uh, restore it. And um, uh, what a boring story that is. Um, now, Bruce, do know. you know this story about um, the, 
I don't know when you started work on Toronto, whether we were, because we didn't work at the, sa the same week. Right, I think, I think, yeah, you were probably started first, didn't you? Yeah. You and Jeff? That's right. Now, th we, we went, uh, you know, it was kind of a unique show for Disney. At that point, Disney was still pretty old style, right? I mean, there was still Very much so. Yep. And, and we had traditional lunches where they'd give us a lunch break and we went to the commissary and we'd sit with the animators and that lasted about, I think about two days because yep. we would wear our little white tights and they were very disturbed by, you know, <laughs> you can't really get through your, your, your seafood salad if, if I'm sitting next to you in white tights. It's just, it's hard. Well, it's uh, basically well, No, it's not hard, but, you know. Um, <laughs> Anyway, well, they started well, serving lunch on the set. That's how that came about. Yeah, or we were told to wear bathrobes to over our wardrobe because <laughs> it was so hard to too. get in and out of those things too, by the way. Yeah. You couldn't just peel this tie, you know, at the end of the day, it was like you had to have somebody help pull the skin off of you, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was our naked bottoms that were basically showing and our <clears throat> other, private other private parts uh, were kind of very visible and there were a lot of these uh, elderly uh, secretaries and having their lunch break and they were all having hot flashes all over the place and it was uh, these young tight butts walking around you know it was um, it was 1982 you know so uh, you know but they did eventually just say don't come anymore okay? just this don't come there it's really distasteful don't show and up you know during what, lunch you know and they sent us over you know. but Peter we, we might have also smelled a little Think about that. Uh, that's probably Might true. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. But I don't, to, to, I don't want to contemplate that. The that's ring game it. smell, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you were wonderful. I mean, you died well, you know. <laughs> oh, come on now. And I know. And, and you saw how much, how, how, how much I was in uh, Tron Legacy, right? I actually did. No. I didn't see Tron Legacy. No, that's okay. I know. You're you're but still not that Tron. much. They can't take Tron away from you. Yes, you know? they could. Oh, they yeah, did. They, <laughs> <laughs> they, they yes, they, they can. Did, they they did. did. Yes, they changed his name to Rinsler. He's now a bad guy. Uh, um, uh, uh, Clue's uh, henchman. Who knew that goofy character Clue would become this big evil dictator on the grid and uh, enslave Tron to become this um, Rinsler? I did the, his voice. Uh, some wonderful, very strong, athletic stuntman played him. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, young Jeff and me. <laughs> but uh, that was it. I was only in the very one scene in the begin, two scenes in the beginning. So, Peter, I want to publicly, uh, um, you know, because I know you were upset. You wanted to be in it. Didn't you want Danny Krom? Shore I mean, was in it? You he wanted, wanted Krom to, be in to come back. Well, I wanted right? him I mean, in it. Gee. I'd have the whole the old crew back if that that had been. And who knows, that may all happen, I don't know. They never think that way. You know, for my money, you could put Londo Malari in Tron too. It'd be okay by me, you know? You know, they don't think that way. No, they don't. That, your hair would have worked perfectly for that, you know, <laughs> in Tron City, but... Uh, How did it, you get cast in the original Tron? Did you just do a regular process, or I mean... Who was it, Pam Polifroni? Was the casting agent, I think. And they just called and you in and she cast me in, uh, oh God, The Gambler, or, well, was that that? 1980, so we started, we tried Tron in 81 or 82, didn't we? Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay, so uh, I think, I don't know, for some reason, but I was doing a Western and, and I'd heard about, uh, I was reading a script, sitting out on a horse in the middle of the Arizona desert, going, I don't, I don't understand this crap at all. What is this? And I, then I waited to get back to the hotel that night. We didn't have uh, cell phones to immediately call someone from in the middle of nowhere, and I said, um, you know what, I don't understand it. I called my agent, I said, uh, can we not deal with this until I get back? I got another week on location, and I'll be back from LA. And I said, I really, I think we should turn it down. I think it's, who the hell was I to turn down a feature what did you at know? Walt you Disney? What did, what did we know? I know? What did what we did know? know? We didn't know anything. I was young and cocky yeah, and feeling right. full of oats. And yeah. So anyway, um, that's basically what happened. Then when I went back, Got back to LA and then my agent was fuming, going, what do you mean you, oh, he's ripping me a new one. And uh, he said, uh, they'd like to meet you. And then when I found it, it was basically because Jeff Bridges was doing it. 
I mean, Jeff was, a, you know, somebody that was really happening. He had had some but he wasn't already a, marvelous. But he wasn't a big, big star. No, but I remember, I remember the remember last picture show. I remember a number right. of really good movies that he was in. He did that. Uh, he was doing, right before Tron, that, that enormous bomb that Chimino did. What was that called? Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate. Yeah. He, he just finished Heaven's Gate. Yes, right? yes. So, but anyway, I, but you're I mean, always aware of these people. And I said, my God, oh, he's doing it. And he was signed. And uh, this guy, Peter Drisic, was signed. And... Um, I said, I don't know who he is, but um, <laughs> but he sounds like Never a good heard guy. Of him. He sounds like a good guy. I said, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, they, uh, that was it. I, then they showed me some footage that they had done, and I said, I had auditioned for Star Wars. I didn't get that. So I looked at this, and I said, it kind of looks, it's kind of got a Star Wars feel to it. I know it's not in outer space. Yeah. It said, I better say yes. So I actually got it. Um, I didn't have to audition for it. I actually was the, wow. but I think there were like several big people that turned it down. Is that right? There's an interesting story. We just lost one of the, uh, a, a wonderful international star. Uh, he was certainly gigantic in the 1960s and um, named Peter O'Toole. You know who that is? He just wow. passed away. God love him. At 81, he probably lived 15 lifetimes in one. Uh, but do you know that he actually? Um, Steven Lisberger told me wanted to play Tron. Oh no! I now you were think say, about think I about. Play the David Warner part, maybe. Well, no. Originally, that's what they he he was he came in to read for that or to meet with them about that. Wow! And in the very middle of the meeting, he said, "No, no, I want to play Tron." And he got <laughs> up on the table in front of Steven Lisberger, who was this it. this little kid from Boston who was given this chance to make this big film. And, and he's got Academy Award winner Lawrence of Arabia standing before him, acting out his movements. Wow. This is how I throw the disc. And he would, you know, he's a fantastic British actor. I mean, you know, and he, really fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was a great, great star. And I just think it's the most ludicrous story I've ever heard. Oh, it's just he great, won, though. You he changed his mind. I'm not going to be Sark, I'm going to be Tron. Of he course. Was, he was a real movie star. He was. Know. Yes, he was. And um, they didn't know how to break it to him. And David came right in and got it. And David was wonderful, too. The, fi the final thing was put on the tights. You know, once, once they saw Bruce in tights, that was it. It was done. <laughs> then, then he was Tron. Buns of steel. Including Peter O'Toole. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. That's all there is to it. Can we answer any questions? Do you have yeah, any questions? Yeah, why don't you guys ask questions, please? What? Oh, no, he's, he wants to know about tights. What's that? Wear, wearing tights? No, I, you know, listen. I'm an actor, Chief. I'm an actor. I mean, you know. I'll go where the, and wear whatever they want or not wear whatever, you know. No, it was very Shakespearean in a way. We were dressed up in these bizarre costumes. Um, when we finally see it, you know what's wonderful about the original Tron, though? Nothing in science fiction looks like it to this day. It is that unique. You know what I'm saying? It may seem old school in many ways, but it's so still so unique, the look of it. Um, yeah, you know, Lisberger was really, he had that vision, and none of us really had any idea what it was going to look like. Isn't that true? Right. Right. And absolutely. so we were just following his lead, including the tights, you know, and he just, it was the first time I ever saw a, a storyboard, for instance. Now Me they too. use storyboards for everything, right? Yep. But he would call you over and say, this is what the scene is going to look like. And, you know, you'd be in a room like this with, with just a platform. And yeah. he'd show you. To, it was really Thank cool. Thank God we had those, too, because uh, Stephen, God bless him, he's, he's a, a, a wonderful guy. He's kind of Yoda now. He's a... Uh, is that right? On, on, the, on the set of Legacy, he was there telling old stories all the time. But great, because he had all input into it. Everybody, look, Tron Legacy was made by grown-up little boys who played Tron when they were kids. Now they grew up to got, make their own Tron movie. Mm -hmm. They were all a bunch of little excited fanboys. Wow. It was great. I mean, when Jeff or I walked through, they parted waves. My God, they, <laughs> they almost bowed, you know? I mean, it was wow, nuts. Wow, fun. It was very uh, a heady experience, you know. Um, but no, uh, Stephen. Uh, what was I going to say about Stephen? I don't know. You were going to say. Something. No, he just had this vision, yeah. and uh, he um, 
was very lucky that this major studio, no one else wanted to do this. And I, I tell you, you know, Disney gets slammed a lot nowadays uh, because they're the biggest dog in the game now. Uh, they have Marvel, they have Star Wars they're going to do now. And they've had some setbacks lately. Some films haven't done so well, but guess what? They still clean up in the DVD market and, and uh, everything else. It was a real break for Lisberger that movie, it was, too. It was a huge right. break, and the studio in those days was really failing. It had some major bombs. Uh, the son-in-law was running it, the son-in-law of Walt Disney, Ron Miller, and he was yeah. more interested in the sports pages than um, uh, Harrison Ellen Shaw, who was the effects uh, supervisor on Tron. He was the son of a very famous matte painter and special effects man, Peter Ellen Shaw. Uh -huh. uh, Harrison tells the greatest stories about how Tron was really made. Everyone thinks it was computer-generated animation. There's maybe 20 minutes in the entire picture, two-hour picture. Uh, if it's that, it's an hour and something. Isn't it? I'm not sure. Is, that is right? yeah. The rest of it was old school, hand painted. Wow. Every cell of you and I, wow. in the coloration of our with our outfits yeah. and glowing and everything, all of that was hand painted in Taiwan by hundreds of Chinese people. Old style Disney, seriously. And he said he would go into Ron Miller's office and say, "This is our problem. We have to do it this way. We need to do it in a timely fashion." They didn't know at first. I mean, this was a really incredible. I, I just learned this stuff, Peter. I didn't know that. That they didn't know what to do. We have thousands and thousands of uh, cells that need to be colorized. We'll never get it done because the computer thing was very slow still at that time in doing all that. So they figured we'll get a bunch of college kids on summer break in a big auditorium. These were some of the brains, uh, Giles, that they had. Uh, and we will have them all sit down, and they'll each get about 62,000 frames. Is this and true? And paint them all. No. And then oh, they this went. This is a, an idea. Then they right? went, this is a problem. Where, how are we going to get that many college students? They were trying to figure, how do we get a mass of people able to paint all en masse, and how are we going to get this done? And then wow. he said, but then we're going to have to feed all those people lunch. <laughs> I'm serious. Harrison tells us great. That's right. So they decide, they contact this in Taiwan, and they said they would have many, many people, artisans that could, could do this. So they, he needed three million dollars. So he goes to Ron Miller, Ron Miller's behind his papers, he's got his feet up on the desk, and all he saw was, what do you need it for? Okay, do it, and back wow. behind the paper again. And so they send in stacks all the cells of film to Taiwan, they are painted, Guess what happens? What? This is a true story. They got stacked wrong, and they were still, everything was wet when they returned it. They had hundreds of people doing all this meticulous painting, and then they sent it back, and it was all crushed together. What? He had to go and ask for three million more. To oh, no. our, that movie, it was a disaster in behind the scenes from the word go. It is, it is one of those wonderful stories that this thing was a pioneering effort we really didn't know if it was going to work. And all of us sort of jumped in and tried to make it work. Yep. And it did work, ultimately. Would, and we're talking about it today in a panel in Galveston, Texas. And it's 31 years ago now. I can't believe it. You got that from reliable sources. They gave him I was there when he told the story uh, in front that? of a panel. And they gave him another $3, three they million. They gave him another $3 million because now we were sunk. Now, it had to be done. Wow. And so a lot of Tron was all old school, hand-painted, like... Peter Ellen Shaw Harrison's father had done with all these great Academy Award uh, motion pictures and animated pictures. There was a feel. What's amazing about that is that now three million is kind of chump change. But absolute but th chump change. for that project, I mean, it was risky doing that project, and um, there was a feel about uh, a Lisberger and uh, the producer. What was his name? Donald Kushner. Don Kushner. That, yeah. That, that yeah. it was kind of like a lark. This is fun. You know, we're gonna make a movie. This will be great. Yippee! And, and uh, yeah. so, I mean, that kind of, that, that story is amazing. I, I, I felt like we were in like this, you know, pioneering effort and they, they weren't sure if this was going to work. Yeah. How it was going to come out. So there was kind of a fear too, you know, like, you know, I, that one night uh, we had, we had so many lights on one set that, and it could have been the set you were on. I'm not sure. Your game, uh, the game yeah. circle thing, what was it called again? The ring game. The ring game. 
Uh, there was such a bank of lights that we had a brownout in Burbank when oh. they turned them all on. Did wow. you know that? Wow. No. That's a true story, and that's on the 20th anniversary um, DVD special features that uh, wow. that uh, it they literally there were so many lights they poof, you know and the lights dimmed in all of Burbank, California a little bit. So that's great. Yeah. I'm sorry, everyone's leaving. It's not the it's just the wrong panel. He he asked he asked one question about tights. That's all you know. One question about, about tights, tights and people are leaving. Oh yeah. my god. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I, I think one always has to use their imagination, but when you're, in, uh, especially in the science fiction realm, it was better that we had see something. Because it, we had no idea. We were in a solid black stage, solid black. Uh, uh, and it was made of a material. It was kind of a velvety, velvety. material. And they cleaned it. All. They had to keep it really clean. And to keep people. it very clean. Uh, we couldn't get sweaty. That's why we had numerous outfits we'd had to change as soon as we started to perspire through the, because uh, uh, we were under such heavy lights so warm in there. Uh, once in a while I had to go outside, I'd just step outside the soundstage and see a green tree or something, because it was black and white. That's what it looked like. And um, so the storyboards helped us because Stephen uh, was a more technical oriented guy, That's right. okay? He really didn't have a lot of experience with actors. I'm not saying that he wasn't, he was bad at it, but to help, he needed that aid to get across what we were doing. Yori and I are climbing up this huge cable thing. It was That's nothing right. but a big black platform. Um, what was that going to look like? And, you know, so it gave us, uh, it helps. It helps a great deal. When you're doing normal, you know, when you're doing a, a episode of Scarecrow and Mrs. King, th that was all there. It was real life, you know, not an imaginary life. When you're doing something in science fiction in another world, another realm, sometimes it, it's great to do that. I know uh, Spielberg really did that in every movie he made. So it gives the actor just an idea. Okay, this is what I'm. This I, is I was my frame. Say, it, it, it was like playing for me, or and I think this is true because nothing was there. It was like when you're a kid and you play games. That's what it kind of felt like. And I thought it was easier. I mean, not easier. It was you know similar process. I loved I it. I mean, but what, how Bruce just described it is really it. You know, they'd say you're you know you're on a ring game and this, this is dropping. It was all like make believe and you know like when you were a kid. So uh, the process felt pretty easy and natural to do. You just played along. As I said, we were following Lisberg's, Lisberger's instructions, you know? If you, if you bought into that, then you bought into the whole thing and you just followed that, so. Now, did he have you with a guy named Sam Schott when you guys were throwing? Because you were throwing an imaginary thing, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty much. But you had like those big highlight type right. um, no, things. Right. I actually had to dodge things that this guy was throwing at me. Uh -huh. Oh, is that right? And they were hard plastic Frisbees. This is a little pliable play thing you get at a gas station uh -huh. or on the beach. These were those hard, like bowling ball hard plastic things, uh, hard plastic. And, um, uh, and he would get all sections of the stage. He would run around. This guy was a Sam shot. He was a champ. I didn't know there was a champion Frisbee guy, you know. Really? I mean, <laughs> there is a championship with Frisbees, yeah. you know. Run, fetch, <laughs> you know. Um, with your dog. Um, anyway, and he would throw that thing so hard. So all of those things that you didn't see going loop to loop all over the place, if you look at the old Tron again, uh, everything that was coming straight at me, that was the real deal. And wow. he somehow takes, he'd hit me so hard, I'd hit, I'd flatten to the floor and zoom, they'd go right over me. And uh, my proudest take is in, uh, they kept in there, I literally, uh, defiantly, Stephen was getting mad with, he would get up there, he was like, he got up on a ladder, and um, so he started throwing them down at me, and they'd go wow, right past my cool. head, and I was dodging them and stuff, and at one point, uh, one came right at my head, and I slightly ducked, and I caught it oh, in great. back of me. Wow. It had already passed over my head, and boom, I grabbed it, and I basically went. <laughs> That didn't he was make trying the cut. To, that, that, that didn't make the movie. No, it didn't. That, well, I was holding on to that. Oh, 
When I brought the disc down and the look on my face, I was giving him the camouflaged version. That's great. You know? Because uh, he, he tried to take the top of my head off with that. So um, uh, it was Jeff fun. And I, Jeff and I, they, they just put us in that big, that main room. And he, it was all imaginary. He, you know, what was interesting, there was obviously only shot one of us at a time. But, you know, we would, we would play together and Steve would talk us through it. He'd say, it's going up and then you'd make believe you catch it. And then you'd make believe you throw it. It was, you know, the best thing, you know. It was... Um, but as I see, you were Crom. I, I was Tron. I was supposed to be the greatest at this. I had to, That's on right. lunch hour, when Jeff got to go off with his little Walkman headphones and listen to Talking Heads, That's right. I, um, you had to work. I had to go on my lunch hour and train with Sam Schott and be running around the empty soundstage with this guy trying to hit me and me fire back and Steven Lisberger going, you throw like a girl. Come on, throw that thing like you have a pair. <laughs> He did, he found that, that was, the, you know, he was like some football coach or something. Wow. Yeah, He's out there screaming on the sidelines. That's what he was doing during our scene. Trying to scream. really egg me on yeah. and yeah. get me mad, and I got mad. I threw it back at him a few times. Is that right? Hell with Sam shots. I threw it at Lisberger a few times. But we, we kissed and made up. No, that's wrong. Um, <laughs> no, he's, he's great, and, you know. He's a fantastic artist now. He's a sculptor and everything. I mean, it's, he's a great guy. Any other? Yeah? Yes, sir. I can't no. wait to hear this. <laughs> because Tron legacy is not about us old farts running around anymore. It's about passing the torch. I mean, uh, I'm here, at the, you know, why wasn't Cindy Morgan in this? Why was it? What? Want to just do the old movie all over again? It's a new movie. It's a new generation. Uh, we were just there to lend a little bit of the past that was in there, and the rest is for young Garrett and and Olivia Wilde to carry on with. And, and I have no idea. It just went away. There wasn't enough people watching it. They didn't have the ratings. Sorry, folks. That's what it I is. I mean, there is. At some I mean, I'm talking to the choir here. But there's not enough of you. <laughs> we need ratings. They need to be able to sell. You know, I'm. That's all I ever heard, but it never really got officially um, canceled. It's just the Disney Channel, um, I think they learned too late, just skewers to a much smaller set. Tron Uprising had a little more of a, some themes and stuff uh, that were probably a little older than what is the normal audience for um, uh, the Disney Channels. So they, believe me, they were disappointed, scratching their head, going, what did we do wrong, you know? Um, so. Who knows? Yeah. Great cast in that one. I, th I was going to say, I sometimes think people, uh, you know, uh, audience or fans uh, imagine that actors have more influence than they do. You know, that's like a negotiating point. If you get to be a really big star, you could negotiate where you have script approval or what's going to happen. For the most part, none of us had that. No, no none of us had that. Right. None of us had that. I mean, Jeff, I'm sure maybe, you would have liked a bigger did. part in Legacy, but you didn't, you know, they don't have I it. Was, I was, uh, to answer your question, I was so thankful to have any part in Legacy. Believe me, I talked to Peter, you know, and I said, I, I can't believe this after 30 years, 28 years at that time, you know, that they were going to do this again, but. Hell, it's called Tron. I thought he should have a big part, but, you know. No, I had not. They didn't I, ask I, me I, either. Well, and to tell you the truth, we shot the beginning of the movie six, six seven months after uh, we had uh, finished shooting Tr uh, Tron Legacy in, in Vancouver. They got, th this is the difference between these big, studio productions, they have the luxury of looking at it again, going, okay, uh, they, there's always a clause in your contract that you do have to, they, if they have to reshoot something, but then they got to renegotiate, that's a funny thing. Okay. But they did, they didn't reshoot, they just changed the beginning of it, and we had a new beginning to it. So I wasn't, uh, I was actually not in it as much in the original shoot, and they gave me that boardroom scene when uh, the little dog uh, uh, comes on the screen, you know, and he foiled. So you see Sam's uh, shenanigans happen as opposed to being told about it. You actually see him act it out and, and do it. That wasn't in the original uh, story. And that whole boardroom scene, which uh, 
again, I was doing another picture out in the Simi Valley, uh, uh, which is very far away from downtown Los Angeles. They flew a helicopter. This is so exciting, Peter. Is that right? They flew a helicopter to come and get me. I rapped on this little Hallmark movie. Did they pick TV you up movie? on a hoist and pull you up into the no, car? No, they landed. Oh, no. <laughs> just one. No, just like that. Yeah, they landed out in the middle of the cow pasture. I was doing a, a Western type thing. Yeah. And they picked me up, and in 14 minutes, I was landing on the old, old AT&T building really in downtown cool. LA. Really cool. It was so cool. They but made a small film, and it was called Get Box Lightner. That's it. <laughs> you know? Dun, 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 jumping on the copter. Right. Do you remember the last, the very last shot in the original Tron? Jeff comes swooping in in a helicopter and lands, and Cindy and I That's practically right. got blown off the roof. That's the truth. Wow. We saw us go, and Cindy's hair went flying, and oh, my God, it was terrible. Um, that's the same building I landed on, and we shot. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, they wanted to have me come out of the helicopter going, saying Jeff's line, greetings, program. But we got there too fast, and the film crew was still trying to get up from the bottom floor. I was already out of the helicopter. But that's cool. But then we shot all night there. We shot that opening scene in Tron Legacy all night long and, and left uh, at 5.30 the next morning. Are there any waters out there? In the what back. Did you, did you bring an empty bottle? Up uh, no, I, that was full. Oh. I am, I am with my day call taking a lot of water. Yeah. Anyway, any other you. questions? Um, you know, uh, yes, sir. They, they got one back there. I don't have to take yours. I think they'll get me one. Thank you. Everyone wants to know that. I. It's a way above my pay grade to tell you. <laughs> um, yes, there's. A, you can go on YouTube and get more information than I can give you. Uh, Joe Kaczynski, who. Uh, had a relatively uh, a good success with this Tom Cruise movie, Oblivion. Um, he's, that was what was holding up. They've been, gone through a couple of scripts. They have a script by a guy named Jeffrey Wigato. That's hey, all I know. Nice. Um, but like I said, Disney's got a full slate do now. That. Do they really need another Tron? Tron Legacy didn't do all that well financially. I hate to tell you that, but uh, it did okay, but not, maybe not good enough to garner another picture. Um, and now they've got Star Wars, and I think they're going to be probably emphasizing that. So I don't know. I don't know. But I heard, I mean, I saw Joe at this WonderCon in Anaheim uh, when he was out uh, advertising, uh, promoting Oblivion, and he said, um, you know, they got this, they're still finishing the script, and he should know, but, you know, it's all about studio politics and money, you know. And, uh, Bottom line drives a lot of things. It know, does, it does. Mar and now they've got, really you know, Marvel, too. They've got Marvel uh, and, uh, and the Star Wars franchise. Uh, and I'm not hearing anything about it anymore. Would I be in it? I don't know. I mean, I would hope so, but I, that's, that's something that's not our choice, you know? More than ever, I mean, I, there was a time, of course, when Hollywood was just a couple of guys making decisions in studios, and, and, but oh, through the course of our careers, it's really changed, too, don't you say? Such it's a huge corporate level. Yeah, it's really, a, it's, it's there really are other about major Mark, corporations. You know, running the numbers, and what should we, how, why should we do it? And, you know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's GE, NBC, Universal, General Electric, you know, I mean, these are huge, major, mega corporations, and uh, even movie studios have to go outside of themselves now to get uh, funding. They have to go outside. That was, uh, they never had to do that. They were always in-house on that, you know. Now they have to get uh, funding for these big, and these big movies, folks, I'm sorry for all you sci-fi fans, but they're gonna go away soon. They're too damn big. They're too damn costly. The age of the small, pay. this is just what happened in the 1960s, uh, late 60s and early 70s, when the indie, uh, we call them indie movies now, but these big, Tent pole, these big mega movie Thor and all these things, um, they're getting, they're not making the money back. And they're caught, they're getting, it's getting more and more costly. So smaller movies, you're gonna see the Academy Awards this year with little films like Nebraska and, uh, oh my gosh, what else is there? Um, uh, Scotty Cooper's uh, movie, uh, Out of the Furnace, these dramas and stuff. This is so reminds me of the independent, in the indie movement that happened when in the 1960s, these big bloated movie studio productions were not filling the movie houses anymore. Yeah, mostly profit margin. People aren't going to the theaters as much as you. It's more costly to go to a movie now. That's why we have these big box office numbers. You know, and television, television's where all the good work is happening now. The really great work, I think. True. Truly is, cable HBO, TV Netflix, has the best. True. Huh? HBO, Netflix, and mm -hmm. it's true. 
And they have all these avenues opening up now. That's why they're making movies. Uh, uh, I'm sure you have it here in Texas. You've got, you go into a, a movie theater, you've got a restaurant in the theater now, and, or a bar, and you get, I mean, there's a movie theater in, in Los, outside of Los Angeles where I live, uh, where a waiter comes up to you. You got a little table with a light and a menu, and you got, you know, it, because they have to drag people out of their own home entertainment places nowadays, because we've all, we're all making our such great, you know, we're so accessible now. We're in competition with shrimp cocktails, you know? <laughs> I don't know if I'll be in the movie. But I, I hope there'll always be Tron, to answer your question. I hope there will be. Um, you know, I think the fact that we're still talking about it this, these many years later, it must resonate somehow. But Jeff's an Academy Award winning movie star. Sorry. You don't count. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but you, the audience, are the last people that they ask your opinion of. I mean, they really don't care. He's an Academy Award winner. People know his name. What's your question? And, you know, I'm sorry. Jeff's a big star. I don't know. What can I tell you? You notice who's doing all those movies? Movie stars who are no longer big at the box office. Kevin Spacey's a wonderful actor, a brilliant actor. And he's got this house of cards. Yeah, <coughs> pardon me. But he's not filling seats in a movie theater anymore. So they're all coming down, and it does affect people that were mainly TV people. I, I, you know, I'm, I can't get a lead role in a TV thing anymore. It's because a they want a movie star. It's, it always has been, you know, an industry, uh, especially for actors, where it's, you know, right place, right time. You got to have a lot of luck. You, you know, you got to be able to do the work. You got to look good in the tights. But, um, right? But, you know, uh, it, it's still about that in a lot of ways. I mean, if, if we had the power to choose, if I had the power to choose about what I could do and when I could do it, well, that would, you know, that's something else. But that's just a dream world. That's not where it's, a, where it's about. It's a, it's, a, it's a marketplace. They pick and choose who they want uh, for actors for the most part. And if they're marketable, then they market them until they're not marketable, and then they, you know, go to Netflix. You're, then you're discarded. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I don't want to need it's to be great, a It's great, though. The industry here. continues to expand. And as, a, as an audience member, I love Netflix. I love HBO. I, I mean, I think that's great, uh, especially when I think about stuff like Babylon, you know, 5, which was a, a series that really should be seen in one whole piece. Well, now, you know, you can sit down and watch House of Cards from, if you want, watch the whole darn thing. So Whenever you want. Whenever you want. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah, I think it's exciting now, to tell you the truth. Of all the new venues, I think it's very exciting. You can watch TV when you want to or watch a movie when you want to on what device you want to. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I saw that coming with my boy, you know, because Ben's, my, yes. my son's 17. And I realized when he was 10 or 12 that he was already picking what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. he'd, he'd watch TV sometimes, and then he'd go play a game. And, uh -huh. then, and I realized, oh, this has all changed. You know, you, you yeah. and I would be We didn't have any choices. Yeah, sit down in front of Two. the TV and watch, watch Howdy yeah. Doody. That's right. That's it. <laughs> right? Howdy Doody. Howdy Doody. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Sir. Well, I great. agree with you. Though the, the 1982 was an incredible year for genre uh, movies. And strangely enough, a couple of those, like Tron, uh, Blade Runner, a couple of them were considered duds at the time. That's right. And now, when you, you're you pitching a, a project like a, a dark, dystopian world, you always say Blade Runner-like. And everyone knows what that That's is. That's right. They've, they've come to you know? stand. But at the That's one right. time, that was Ridley Scott. That was what Harrison else happened? Ford's. What else was in 82? Tell me. E.T.? E I hated that damn little... <laughs> E.T., do you realize that dumb little... I'm gonna go home. I'd have sent him home, all right. <laughs> In just, a box. Just annoys you, um, does it? Is he that annoyed it? the hell out of me. He sucked the oxygen out of the whole summer. I mean, Tron would have done a lot better. <laughs> but... Ah, uh, now we get the truth. 
Now we know why he didn't like E.T. Oh. You oh, wanted no. to be the little E.T. doll. You, you wanted no, little I didn't want to be it. But I'd have kicked his ass all the way back home, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> um. Ah, the truth is out. It's great. But by the way, to add to that, you haven't seen a sequel to that movie, have you? Okay? <laughs> 28 years later, no. What else, what else you got on your list there? You got, what else went in 82? Did you? Did we... Wrath of oh, Khan, Wrath Star, of Star Trek, yes. Probably one of the best ones, if ever. What else? Barbarian. Yes, Barbarian. Arnold Schwarzenegger. 82, it was a good year. What else? He's got a list over I know, there, look at that. I know, he's got it, I know, he's looking now. Is he a film critic? Oh, good. Yeah. I don't have one, thank you. Dark huh? Crystal, yes, yes. First Blood, Rambo. The Rambo mm -hmm. movie. That was in one year, one, basically one summer almost. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Total Recall, when was that? Wasn't that around that time too, or maybe a year later? Who said 97? Not <laughs> 97. 87, right? 87? No. Really? 92? Total Recall? Arnold Schwarzenegger? No. Get out your phones. Come on. I can go look it up. It, it, there's something wonderful and ironic. 1990. What? 1990. Total Recall was 90. God, I have lost a few brain cells. Isn't, isn't there something wonderfully ironic about him trying to recall uh, a total recall and not being I have no total recall, isn't right. Isn't that funny? 92, 82. He doesn't have total recall. But I don't they, have you it. Know. No, I don't. No. What's your question? Yes. It literally was commenting on the time that it was made, but also of the advance of the, uh, to me, one of the messages between the original Tron and Tron Legacies show how far we've come in the video game world. That's right. Because the original Tron looked like the Donkey Kong Pong Pac-Man game that it yeah. was, you know, and those big, you know, uh, and then you look at the sophistication of video games today and how the worlds that are created and stuff, and that's what Legacy looked like which to me, uh, you know, they still had the old recognizers and the light cycles, but those old jalopies were all juiced up and modernized, you know? It, it kind of reflected, the, and then ultimately in the larger culture, reflected the, our, the age of technology that we're in. You know what I'm saying? And that was another piece of trivia about the, the, the Tron set. Lisberger put games, he didn't get to play them because he was rehearsing during lunch now, I understand, but um, he, put, he put, you know, games on the yeah, set. Yeah, but you heard why, because and I love Jeff Bridges, I really do. Did Bridges he is want them? the dude. Well, because we had him all along one whole wall on one of the stages. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Lisberger, who had very little patience at that time because everything was riding on his shoulders, he's going, All right, we, we need Jeff. Where's Jeff? Get Jeff. I need Jeff now on the set. He's on the Galaxia game. Look, right? Has anyone seen Jeff Bridges? And you hear him on the little mics, you know, they'd go, yeah. Is Jeff around? Jeff, well, go find him. Where is he? And then you'd hear, And then we'd go, Jeff? Jeff, what? You'd hear him way over there. Jeff, we need you on the set. Jeff, come on, get on the set. I'm working on my part. He was over, you know, he was working, he was playing Kevin Flynn on the video game. And Actually, uh, he was going for his high score. He wasn't, yeah. you know. He was the highest score, by the right. way. That's right, he wasn't working on his part at he all. He truly is the dude. Um, uh, and he, uh, you know, he did, he took this, Battle Zone, what game was it? It was Battle Tank or something like that. He took that machine further than I think the makers ever imagined this thing would go. So he truly was Kevin Flynn. It, I mean. it made the it made the shoot a little, you know, more of a, a you know, kind of a clubhouse feel though. That's that wasn't. And nice. they and they <laughs> then they took him away. That's I think right. maybe you were gone already. But oh, is that no, right? they took him away because oh. you couldn't get half the crew off the damn things, and we had to get a movie made here. See, you know? early on in the shoot, he'd actually encourage you to go play. I know they. They took him away. You, that soured. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Another question? <laughs> I, I certainly didn't know anything about computers. I didn't know anything about computers. None and of us I was did. A, I was a video game nut, but, you know. No, I wasn't going to waste my money at an arcade. I was 31 years old, for God's sake. 
I was I was 31 I was, and I was wasting money in an arcade. I was so. You should That's be ashamed of yourself. For, I know, right, exactly. You're an adult, for God's sake. <laughs> I know. You were like, actually married, though. In a, I right? was married. I was yeah. roping steers every night out That's in an right. arena in, yeah. in uh, Moore Park, California. I, you, know, you remember, you know, uh, as a wonderful guy, um, who's his, uh, oh, God, Jeff's uh, buddy he met on in Texas down here in Marfa, Texas, when they shot Last Picture Show. And he's been working for Jeff ever since. He's his double. He's his stand-in. Uh, I forget. Because he's the one who had the line, uh, Jeff asks him, uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Catlett, his name is. And he says, uh, who's that guy down there? And he says, that's Tron. He fights for the users. Well, Lloyd was this good old boy from Texas here. And he and I would go around terrorizing everybody because we had lariats on the set. Can you imagine? We're dressed in tr as Tron outfits. And I've got not a Frisbee in my hand, but I've got a lariat. And I'm roping people's feet out from under them. <laughs> and, we're <laughs> and we're roping chairs and things like that. Just standing around, throwing a rope, practicing. Jeff's off listening, smoking some weed, and uh, listening to uh, I'm Talking glad you Heads mentioned or that. something. Jeff was, I know. Yeah, he was the dude. Okay. <laughs> you know, and um, the Cohen brothers, you know, they got him just to a T. That's, that's Jeff Bridges. That's, that's the guy. He's wonderful. And, uh, but that's what we, it was a very strange set. Then Lisberger insisted that we put the ropes away because we were, we put weren't the ropes in away. I love put it. the ropes away. That's it. We're making a movie. Put That's, the ropes away. We're not doing away. a western with, uh, you know, uh, hockey helmets on. You know, so, I mean, there's anyway. Let the question back yes. to you. Hairstyles Babylon 5, maybe, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> so many things. I, uh, Anytime I put on tights outside of Tron, I really, that's really personal information. I don't want to, <laughs> I'd rather not talk about it. Those it, are called. It, it, ha it happened plenty, Peter, but I'd rather Peter, not. They're not called certain. tights anymore, sir. They're called Spanx. <laughs> that's as close as we get. I don't know. I, you know. Uh, not really for me. No, I, you know, you see some things, though, in our life today that you go, that's kind of like Tron. Uh, what I do in the privacy of my own home and in my bedroom is my business, okay? What? I said, what I do in the privacy of my own home and my bedroom is okay. my business. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not quite sure if I know what you're, what you're asking. Is that, do you think there are things that uh, in our daily lives today that we see and use that, I think our handheld computer devices and stuff like that are very Tron sort of oriented. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. I'm glad that went away. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. I don't know. A Prius kind of looks like a light cycle. I don't know. Uh, doesn't quite move as fast and have the turning capabilities. You know, all that uh, light cycle was for us there. I think they had it was great in Tron Legacy. I walked out on the. They had Tron City out there built. Um, and that was big in Tron Legacy. We had big practical sets. So much I think people still think that's all CGI. No, they built these massive sets out there in a place called Burnaby outside of downtown Vancouver. And Matt, Tron City was a full city built out there. The exterior of Flynn's Arcade was half built and then the rest would be CGI. They had the whole interior of Legacy. They recreated that sloppy old dirty building in downtown uh, Culver City. Uh, they built it, to, I mean, it was amazing to walk in there. They'd got all those games again, and uh, there was Flynn's little apartment above that's the right, that's thing, right. and yeah. it's like I, it was, I would stand there by myself for a few minutes and look, and I'd think, you know, see those blinds go up, and there's young Jeff Bridges looking out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was bizarre. Right, but right. Um, the old light cycle, you know, uh, was nothing but a, a stick about that high with a crossbar on it. <gasps> Is that right? Yeah, the original one. Yeah, we stood there, we stood straight up like this, and then we went, 
Isn't that cool? Wow. That was high tech, man. And then months later, I saw this orange thing come over me, and suddenly I was going. And it was so awkward to be standing in that position doing your dialogue, you know, red one to blue two or whatever it was. And, you know. I still talk to Dan Shore, by the way, once in a while. Who Dan played Shore played Ram. Ram. Yeah. He too. He was in the uh, special features we did for Legacy. I don't want to tell you that, Peter. You're going to get mad at me. <laughs> you should have been in there too. Yeah. You know, and Danny was very excited. He's in, like an acting teacher in New York. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we did this special features thing. It was like uh, continuing the story on, if you saw that in Legacy on the DVD or Blu-ray. I cast him in a play that I was directing. That's how we met. Mm -hmm. And then he, I, I was at a party at uh, a friend of his house. That's how I met Lisberger at a party. The old, the old Hollywood way. He came up to me during the party and said, we're making a movie. Would you like to be in the movie? Yeah. Honest to God. I love it. You know, I okay, love yeah, it. I, yeah, I'll be in the movie. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was really little then. I talked really high. And then we wound up in Babylon 5. There's a question way in the back there. Yeah. In Tron? I never had a bad moment other than in the rehearsal and trying to kill me. But um, making of the movie was long. Uh, I hurt myself. That's my worst moment. I, I injured myself uh, uh, doing a stunt when Yori and I come sliding down this thing. The recognizers, chasers were sliding down. I, um, I said, no, I can do this. This is my own fault. So I never always rely on the, the stunt people. They take the falls for you. They make you look better than you're ever going to make yourself. So let them and do it, and right? let them do it. It's their paycheck. But no old Bruce here, you know, I can do it. Simple. And I slid down this thing and I did a, sh I hit the cement floor and did a shoulder roll and came up and my shoulder ripped right out. I had hurt myself so badly. Um, and I gutted my way through it. And I said, I said to Yori, are you all right? She should have said, are you all right? I was dying inside. And uh, they had to take me to the hospital after we shot, finished. And um, I had really damaged myself. I had uh, acupuncture for you. No, no, they kept going. They just shot some other things. And I just, um, they had doctors working on me and everything. And they had to get me through it. So I did. Um, but um, that was my worst moment. It was just really painful. But the rest of it was an absolute joy. It really was. When we were up at um, Lawrence Livermore Laboratories, you know only Walt Disney at the time could film, could get permission by the United States government to shoot in the most top secret nuclear laboratory. Wow. Where bombs were made, where everything was made. And there were these strange people in white, long lab coats with long hair and beards. They were as white as this table. Is this true? They lived underground because Livermore is all underground. And they used to say... It is, too. Lawrence Livermore Laboratories is underground. It should be. Have you been there? <laughs> God almighty, what a dump. It was a long time um, ago. We're allowed to make stuff up. You know? We don't have to tell the truth. This is a panel. We're not telling the truth here. This, Never this let... Is, this, this goes under the general category of total recall. You know? Yeah. D just big. I believe, in the, I believe in the thing. Thank you, Brian. Uh, that uh, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> Come on, I mean. <laughs> but we did. We shot down there, and only Mickey Mouse could shoot in the top secret um, uh, uh, laboratories. And that's where that whole big, in the original Tron, the big um, laser thing where Jeff gets beamed into the game. That, is, that was uh, Shiva, it was called, the goddess of uh, creation and destruction. And that whole room, that gigantic room, was one laser massive thing we shot in there and um, shows you the power of that how important Disney was. They, they got permission to shoot there. And that big door that opened, we're standing outside, that big door. You see how thick that thing was? That's in case the place blew up. You know what I mean? We were slowly indicated, yes, there was nuclear bombs in this damn place being developed, nuclear technology, and that door was outside and uh, they had spilled some nuclear stuff and they had these roped off areas around it on the pavement saying, caution, nuclear spillage. Wow. And our crew is dragging cables through it and everything. 
<laughs> and we had to wear these little bunny uh, shoes. Every room you went, you had to get, uh, you had to take off these little plastic things and put on these other new booties to go into the next room. It was really interesting. And they said there were Russian spies parked outside offering anybody money for in information. I said, you really, you know that? Oh, yeah, there's Boris over there, Yuri's over there. Uh, they ask us every day, you know, when we come out. It was just common knowledge. But you really believe all that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I didn't believe it at the time either, but not then. So. Any more questions? It's really degenerated here, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> yes. And they called me and asked me. Um, <laughs> seriously, I didn't know they were going to do it. And I, 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 I never got I, a call. <laughs> See, this is a touchy right. situation here. It's very I touchy. Care. He's a very dear friend of mine, and I... <laughs> I, it was awkward, because I did talk to you. After. I can go on with my life that I wasn't in Tron Legacy. It's all right. I can. I will. It's okay. You're a nice man, Peter. You really are. Um, but you hate me, and I know you do. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, that had been rumored for a long time. So, I don't know. But I never really thought that was gonna, we were going to do it. Why would you do it? That movie was old. Why would they do it? Why do the original? I always say this about these things. Why would you do Babylon 5 again? Think about that. How many times was there a movie mentioned about that, Peter? Many times. Yes. Many times. No more now. No more. No, please, I don't. I, I, it's kind of like I've been there. I don't want to do a, a Babylon 5 anymore. Aren't We'd never be able to capture that no. magic anymore. We're getting too old. Yeah, I know. I know. We're getting to the end, so get your questions in if One you more, have them. One more, because I think we're just about done. We got two more? Three? Two okay. more. Ooh, whomever. Whomever. Oh! <laughs> wow. When, when it first came out, the original, when we saw it in the theater, I th saw it at a screening. Yeah. Rudger Hauer was sitting right in front of me. He had been invited. There was, you know, those screenings, people come from all here. And uh, uh, I don't know what that had to do with anything, but um, I was impressed. It was it just looked like something. I, wow, we did that. Yeah, I had no idea what. I, I I was late. I was working up in San Francisco, and I came down for the night of the screening, and I mm -hmm. missed it. It didn't get in, and they turned me away. Of course, I said I'm in the movie. They said no, no, you can't come in and start it. And I went outside, and there was a limo sitting out front, or there was a bunch of limos sitting out yeah, front yeah. on uh, on Wilshire there. And the window comes down, and it was Lisberger. He di he didn't watch it either that night. And uh, he said, he was, probably, he was probably throwing up. He was because, nervous. Yes, because he that's the first showings of it. And, the, and, and I sat with him and chat, chatted with him. And, you know, it didn't do well. Didn't do well. Yeah. It was in a series of Disney flops. It was one of them. And D Walt Disney Productions literally disappeared. It was called Touchstone after that. The Walt Disney brand. It's so strange today because it's everywhere now. But the, the Walt Disney brand by that time was so a f such a failure that they changed uh, a new company called Touchstone Pictures. You know that? A Walt yeah. Disney fine line underneath, wow. Walt Disney Productions. One last question, make it a good one. Oh, oh good. know if it impacts my my preparation for my students at all I don't I mean I bring all of whatever I, I you know I mean I can re remember learning and and I, I use all of the processes of my work in the that I teach them but I don't know the Babylon 5 or you know occasionally there'll be a student who's a Babylon 5 fan and they, of course they never tell me until the semester is over that they're sitting there the whole time thinking Londo's my teacher what fun <laughs> you know or a Tron fan waiting for me to come in in white tights, you know, and tea. <laughs> but I never hear it until it's over. And, you know, of course it informs your work in some way, but I, I'm not sure specifically. Well, I wish they knew it because the, your characterization of Londo was probably the most brilliant, one of the most brilliant performances Aww. on television. This is my Bar old none. friend, can you Bar tell? None. I don't care what he said, I don't want to hear what you say, blah, blah, blah. You've 
just take credit for it because you were brilliant in that role and it was always a privilege to work with you in scenes. With you and Andreas Katsoulis, I was desperately trying to hold on to any kind of presence in a scene. These guys could eat more scenery than, um, I'm telling you, I used to sit and watch these guys work because I, I was so impressed by the performances. So you are wonderful, you know he, that. He's my old friend, can you tell? Okay, thank you. Thank you.